Hi, this is Nick with iConnect Training. We've got one of our TU-406Cs here, and I'm gonna go through a little bit of the setup with you here today and show you how to get our iManifold connected. So once this unit gets delivered, there are a couple things that you need to do to start up. We'll need to attach the ductwork. The registers are already installed. You'll just need to apply a couple of self-drilling screws to the top of the air handler. That'll secure it there. There is a mounting arm here to support the rest of the ductwork that will have two self-drilling screws holding that up on the back and then you can secure that here from underneath so the ductwork will be stable. So we're also going to need to connect this unit up to power so we'll have to either hardwire it in to a disconnect or we can hook it up to a plug to plug it right into an outlet. So here I've got my iManifold 900C along with my two humidity and temperature probes. I've got my high and low pressure probe along with the thermistors connected already. So I'll go ahead and show you where we're going to hook these pressure probes up down to the access ports below. Okay, so here we have our liquid line access port and our suction line access port. I'll hook our high pressure probe up to the liquid line. Now I'll hook up the low pressure probe up to the suction port. So on my T1 port on my low pressure probe, I have that going to my pipe strap thermistor going to my suction line. On my T2 port, I have my outdoor air thermistor. So here I'm going to pull back the pipe insulation just a little bit, just enough room to attach my thermistor. Secure that. Okay, so I've already attached my discharge line temperature sensor to the discharge line. That's in my T2 port of my high pressure probe. In my T1 port, I'll connect to the liquid line just past the service valve. So with our supply air probe, we'll throw that on the supply ductwork with our magnetic sleeve. So on our return air, I will attach our return air probe with our magnetic sleeve. So the first time when we go to fire this thing up, we want to make sure that all the fault toggle switches are in the on position, that the blower motor speed control is in the on position. We can double check our fusible disconnect that that's in the on position. Then from our thermostat, we need a call for cool. So I'll flop that over to cool. We'll call for cool. So as you can see, our high pressure is starting to increase, our low pressure is starting to decrease. Our coil temperatures are starting to get down and up to where we need them to be. Um, you can see our four temperatures, our suction line temperature, outdoor air, discharge line temperature, and liquid line temperature. Our superheat and our subcooling, both of those will start to stabilize here in about 10 minutes. So from this side of the trainer, we've got a hidden fault box with a hinged cover that we can close and open to hide from any students. We've got four different toggle switches in there to cut the power to the condenser fan, the transformer, the reversing valve, and the line one going into the air handler. We've also got a blower motor speed control for the evaporator fan, our blower. So that speed can be adjusted and show the students the reaction of, of all the corresponding temperatures. So all the three-quarter PVC will be in the box that you need to install. So there will be a short piece here going down to an elbow and a P-trap. Another elbow and then we've got two lengths of PVC just to get the condensate drain away from the frame and then any sort of bucket to collect water underneath that.